on to uh, an urgent oral question. Mr Jim Allister has given notice of an urgent oral question to the Assembly Commission. I would remind members that if they wish to ask a supplementary question, they should raise continually in their places. The member who tabled the question will be called automatically to ask a supplementary. Clerk, please read the question. Sorry. To ask the Assembly Commission what steps it proposes in light of the BBC spotlight revelations about the abuse by some MLAs of Assembly expenses. I call Ms Judith Cochrane to answer on behalf of the Assembly Commission. Thank you, Mr Principal Deputy Speaker, and I thank the member for his question today. The Assembly Commission takes its responsibilities for the proper management of public funds seriously. Since the restoration of the Assembly in 2007, the Commission has introduced a wide range of measures to improve the framework of financial support for members and to be transparent about the use of public funds. These measures include the full publication of members' expenses for OCE claims going back to 2003-04, which is essentially for the past 10 years, placing restrictions on the employment of family members, introducing a requirement for evaluation to be carried out by independent valuers of all constituency offices, unlike other parliamentary institutions where evaluation is only required in certain circumstances, bringing forward legislation to establish the Independent Financial Review Panel to determine the level of expenditure that can be claimed to reimburse members for costs incurred in carrying out their assembly duties, an annual audit undertaken to the highest professional auditing standards in line with the public sector internal audit standards to cover the expenditure claims made by a random selection of 25% of all members, in addition to the audit of the Commission's expenditure by the Comptroller and Audit General every year. A number of the issues raised in the programmes have already been addressed through these measures that I've outlined, and in addition, the Assembly's Accounting Officer had referred two matters to the PSNI in advance of the broadcast of the programmes, and furthermore, the Commission has already met to consider some of the issues that were raised, and has tasked officials with bringing a paper of options to consider models for administering expenses, and the Commission is due to meet again at the conclusion of this item of plenary business. Mr Principal Deputy Speaker, the Assembly Commission's commitment to good governance and the prudent use of public money is steadfast and appropriate action will be taken to address any substantive issues and the Commission will seek to continually strengthen and improve its systems and processes. And I call Mr Jim Allister for supplement. Okay. If the Assembly Commission has been doing its job, why did it take a television programme? to expose the near industrial scale abuse of expenses going on, it seems, right under the Commission's nose. And if the PSNI come asking questions about bogus cultural societies or a bogus research company, this time, can she assure us they won't be told, move on, nothing to see here, that this time the Assembly Commission will open their books entirely in a totally transparent way. Uh, I thank the member um, for his question. Um, and I, I understand that you've already uh, written to the Assembly's accounting officer um, to address um, a couple of these matters. And Assembly officials um, did meet with the PSNI back in 2009 regarding a complaint that had been made. And at that meeting, um, they did advise that the PSNI, um, ha they advised the PSNI that they had no evidence of a criminal nature um, that had been brought to their attention, nor had any evidence of criminality been identified through the annual programme of um, audits that are carried out by the Assembly. Um, but of course, um, and if there's any issue um, that the PSNI um, come forward with, the Commission will. Um, be reviewing all aspects of the allegations and will indeed um, liaise um, and give whatever assistance it can um, to the PSNI. Well, Mr. Alistair Rock. Thank you, Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker. Um, the, the member has outlined the rule changes that have, that have taken place over the last number of years, and I'm sure she would agree that we have a system where, if there has been a misuse or an allegation of a misuse of assembly allowances, that that can be investigated, first of all, by the Independent Commissioner for Standards, and in more serious cases, perhaps by the, the Police Service of, of Northern Ireland. Can I ask the member, though, um, given the, uh, the spotlight which is on um, a member, member's allowances, whether she believes it's now time for the Commission to give consideration to a new independent body, not only to determine allowances and salaries for members, but also to administer those, to, those uh, allowances to members, and that, that would sit outside of the uh, existing structures. 
Chairman. I, I thank the, the member um, for his question. Um, as I've already outlined, um, the, the Commission has already um, put in place um, or requested um, a paper to come forward uh, with some options, and um, we will be meeting um, straight after this meeting again uh, to review um, the content of the broadcasts. We will be assessing whether or not there were any substantive issues um, that have not already been resolved through the, the current process, uh, assessing whether there are further improvements that can be made to the current administration um, of members' claims within the existing IFRP determination. And we will consider the various models that are available for an overall system um, to see whether that needs to be changed or alternatively identifying any other issues that we might want the IFRP panel to consider as part of its next determination. Uh, given some of the allegations, could the member advise the House how the Commission uh, intends to deal with the question of, which there seems to be quite a number of, 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 of incidents, of unregulated uh, family employment and how that squares with fair employment legislation? Again, I, I thank the, the member um, for, for his question. Um, I, I've already stated some of the measures um, that have already been put in place uh, to restrict the employment um, of family members uh, to one per member, although those, um, those who were already in post obviously um, you know, were not um, sacked as a, re as a result of that determination. This is something um, that uh, the uh, Commission can look at going forward uh, as a means to tighten up this issue. Thank you, Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker. Can I thank the, the member for her answers thus far? Uh, she has hinted at a change to come, and I think on the back of Mr. Ross's question, uh, she sort of said that. But will there be any independent investigation, inquiry into the allegations that uh, were made within the programme? Um, I mean, as I've said, the, the Commission itself um, will look into um, the, the issues um, that were raised um, and we will look into them in more detail. Um, if there are any substantive issues um, that, that are, have not already been resolved or are not in the process of being resolved, um, then um, you know, an independent investigation may be the way forward and that is something that the Commission um, will discuss. And it may be in the means of uh, new powers um, given to the IFRP or a completely separate um, body set up to look at this going forward. Ian, Commissioner Robin Swan. Mr. Principal, Deputy Speaker, and I thank the Commissioner so far for her answers. But what reassurances can she give this House that the Commission, nor any single member of the Commission, will not in any way hamper the police's PSNI's investigation or any other body's investigation? Um, well, I mean, I, at the end of the day, um, us as Commission members um, form part of a corporate body, and therefore, um, you know, we, we are there not to act on behalf of our parties, um, but to, to act um, in the best interests. Um, and all, all of what we want to look at um, will be to ensure full openness and transparency um, of all members' claims going forward. The comments of Trevor Lund. Thank you, Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker. Just again on the back of Mr. Ross's question, where he seems to suggest a, a brand new body to oversee these matters. The fact is, we, we, we have an independent financial review panel. Mm -hmm. The problem is that it's a bit short on teeth. So, would, would the member agree with me that perhaps the expansion of that panel to include investigative powers and the ability to issue more than one determination and a mandate might be the way forward? Um, well, I mean, the, the current system um, that, that's in place um, allows um, an assurance um, of all um, expenses um, undergoing, um, you know, uh, a review, um, and um, all original invoices, etc., um, you know, have to be at the moment put, put in place along with an assessment of their admissibility. Um, you know, I, I've already answered to other members um, that yes. Um, the Commission are meeting after this meeting. We have a number of, of items already um, in a paper, I understand, um, to consider a way forward. And yes, perhaps one way to do that um, would be to strengthen the current role of the, the current panel. Well, Mr. Gregory Campbell. Thank you, Principal Deputy Speaker. Uh, in supporting the concept of the creation of an Ipsos-style body, would the Commission member agree with me 
that uh, those um, uh, issues that haven't been dealt with yet were mentioned in the programme need to be rooted out for the future, but that it would strengthen everyone's hand if uh, a public body, publicly funded body like the BBC, were equally open and transparent about the wages, salaries, overheads and expenses that they incur, uh, as the rest of us are. Um, <laughs> I thank the, the member um, for, for his points. I, I'm not going to comment um, on, on the BBC at the moment. However, one thing that I would say is that um, you know, um, some members ha have stated that um, there were wrong claims made um, against them. And um, the Commission will certainly assess the entirety of those claims. Um, and if it's clear that some of them were, um, were not uh, factual um, in nature, then I would imagine that the Commission would want to raise that with the BBC. I'm going to call Mr. Marcino Mueller. Colonel Mohega, the free will ask in Corlea. I wonder, could I ask the uh, Commission member in relation to the rental of constituency offices? Would the Commission set out clearly the rules relating to the rental of constituency offices, the requirements therefore placed on uh, elected members, so that the public can get a full understanding of the precise nature of those rules? Uh, I thank the, the Minister uh, or the, the member for his, um, his question. Um, there are clear rules um, uh, in place, um, and the Commission takes the view um, that, that the, the regime for this um, are, are clear. They are set out in paragraph 9, subparagraphs 11 to 14 of the IFRP determination. And a member cannot claim for the cost of office rentals if the office is leased from a family member or from a person with whom the member has a connection under certain sections of the Companies Act 2006 or a person from whom the member or his or her family members do derive a financial benefit. The Commission may ask the panel to consider whether further measures need to be adopted to ensure a more open and transparent approach to landlords of constituency offices is available. The IFRP rule on the maximum amount that a member can reclaim for office rent is also set out in the IFRP determination. And I call Mr. Stephen Agnew. Thank you, Principal Deputy Speaker. Um, I hold open competition, and including interviews for, for all my roles and with all my staff. I do this in spite of the rules rather than because of them. Um, is the Commission supportive of introducing um, at least some basic rules to reflect the fact that these are rules being paid out of the public purse and also to ensure the member gets the best quality staff? Uh, well, again, um, you know, the, the employment of, of individual staff from OCE um, is a, a matter for an individual member, as members often work in different ways, and some people um, you know, focus more on um, you know, constituency uh, casework issues as opposed to uh, research. So different members will have different requirements. Um, speaking from a personal capacity, uh, my hiring of staff was done in an open and, and transparent manner um, as well. Um, but it's something that certainly um, the Commission um, will discuss um, and whether or not there are best practice guidelines that can be put in place. That's exactly. And I call Mr David McNary. Thank you, Principal Deputy Speaker. Could I ask the Commission to address uh, that there would be no similarities to the investigation into the Northern Ireland Events Company? A £1 million loss, which cost over £1 million to investigate, which after seven years there has been no report and no sight of any PSNI involvement. The reason I ask the question is would the Commission give assurance to the Assembly that it too will not be hooked on delays awaiting a report which actually could last longer than this Assembly's remit? Can she give an answer as to the timescale that this Assembly will be presented with a factual and concluding report? Um, I, I'm not entirely uh, clear of uh, the relationship that he's made between um, that investigation and what we're talking about here. The Commission will review all aspects of the allegations that have been made. And if it transpires that there are matters that have to go to the PSNI or have to go to HMRC or the Charity Commission or whoever, then, then that will be the case. I can't speak for those bodies to say exactly how long it will take for them to um, finish their investigation. Call Mr William Irwin. Deputy Speaker, as I as one of the members uh, of this House that was highlighted uh, in the, that particular programme as one who had bought an office desk at £1,725, and of course a picture of that desk was put on the programme, I totally refute the allegation made on the Spotlight programme. Indeed, this was a complete built-in unit with office counter cupboards and office desks all in one. Uh, and I'm quite happy for the Assembly Commission to come out and look at my desk, quite happy for the BBC 
spotlight program to come out and uh, take a picture and put it back on the program and clear the air on that one. Can I ask what can be done to protect members that are falsely accused? Um, thank the member for his question. As I've already stated, um, while I'm, I'm not keen to comment on parts of the programme uh, in relation to individual members, um, the Commission will review all aspects of it um, in a measured way, and if they feel that there are issues of factual inaccuracy that require clarification with the BBC, then the Commission will consider whether or not it does that and in what manner it does that. Thank you. And, uh, that concludes this item of business. And, and could I thank uh, Ms Cochrane for uh, taking the questions from the, the members.